Good morning from America. It's really early and I know it's eight o'clock at night in Beijing, right? So welcome to um, my webinar today um, on Glacier National Park. Um, so first of all, um, let me tell you a little bit of a background with Glacier National Park. Um, so for before now, um, from 2017, until boy, it was 2020 almost. Um, my husband and I, um, just the two of us, um, traveled all over the United States to different places. And we worked at different places. And we had what's called a camper that we pulled behind our truck. So we had a home to live in, you know, to live in um, that we pulled behind everywhere we went. Um, and for those three years, um, it was so much fun. Um, we saw so much open road. We saw, we met so many people. Um, and again, we went to, oh, it was over 12 different national parks and battlefields and monuments. Um, we were able to go to Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. Um, we also went to Virginia, which if you know Americans history, um, so the history of America started on the east side of the United States um, with certain colonies and settlements during the earlier times. So like the 1400s to the 1600s, a lot of early settlements. So eventually everybody kind of just spread west after many, many wars and battling um, with the Native Americans and also with the English people. Um, and then, of course, Americans fought with each other over lands. And most everyone then started heading west because gold was a big thing. Um, so they wanted to find gold and make money um, and then start a life in the west and eventually, you know, raise their families and things like that. So Glacier National Park is in the west side of the United States. Um, and I am currently in Wisconsin and I'll show you a map here in a minute. So I came all the way up from Alabama, where I was working at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. I went all the way up to Wisconsin, where I am now. I went to visit my mom and dad. And then from there, I went all the way west to Montana. Um, so let's get to a map and I'll show you a little bit about the area first before I tell you about Glacier National Park, which is pretty cool. All right. So let's see, where is my map? Let me close all this. So here we go. Here is my map of the United States. So some of you may have already traveled to the United States to different parts, and that is amazing. I'm going to show you another part today. So where I began, I was working down here at, in Alabama at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, and then I drove about 14 some wide hours, long time, with my camper so I could sleep overnight in my camper. I went to Wisconsin to visit my mom and dad, where I am now, actually, to take care of them. And then from there, I trekked over this way, stopped at different places, went across the Mississippi River in Minnesota, went here through the Black Hills of South Dakota, and caught a little corner up here in Wyoming to see Devil's Tower, which was really cool. And then I made my way up towards Montana to Glacier National Park. And I'm gonna circle the whole thing pretty much. It's, it's pretty big and I'll be more specific about how big. Um, it's um, the Northern part of the United States, but it's also part of a Southern part of Canada. So right here where this little line is, is the border of Canada. So you can definitely tell that it was such a big trip but it was, it was well worth it and it was wonderful. So, Nonetheless, while we were there, we had jobs and we worked and we met lots of people and went camping in our camper. And I'll show you some of those pictures later. So this kind of gives you an idea of the geography of where Glacier National Park is and when and if we can start to travel safely again. Um, hopefully you'll put it on your list uh, to come visit when you come to America, 
because you're going to see some beautiful pictures and video today of one of my favorite national parks, um, a very large national park. So there's that for you. So hopefully take some notes, get some paper, get some pencil, um, and then write down Montana Glacier National Park. Um, and then let's begin our journey today. All right. So I'm going to turn my volume on so you guys are able to see and um, notice the video today. So first of all, um, I designed a PowerPoint for you guys um, about Glacier National Park. Now, the entire PowerPoint here um, are from my collection of photographs. So every single picture that you see on every single PowerPoint slide um, are pictures that I have taken um, while I was there at Glacier National Park. So even this first picture that you see, um, this one here is called the reflection at Lake McDonald. Um, this is Glacier's largest natural freshwater lake. And um, it is absolutely beautiful. You can see from the photograph, um, the water itself, if you look down in the water, you can see all the way down, pretty much to the bottom. <laughs> it is so very clear. Um, it is, it's unlike any other lake um, because it is so clear, but also the source of the lake is from the glaciers, the glaciers that have melted. So if you look up here, you can see these snow-capped mountains. Um, in the wintertime, they are completely covered with snow. And once the summer, well, the springtime comes around in, you know, uh, March, April, May, the ice and the snow start to melt, and you'll see a lot of waterfalls, and you'll see um, avalanches even, where the snow is coming down the mountain, and then you'll see the lakes start to fill up and it is really cold <laughs> let me tell you it is really cold um i kayaked in the lake a lot <laughs> and in the creek that flows from it it is very cold just getting on my kayak and that's in july so but you have to have you have to do it for the experience um so nonetheless <laughs> we'll look at some of those things that i did get to work and play so at glacier national park and I loved it. So my photography, again, my website, I don't know if you can get access there in China, but it is the birdchoir.com. Um, it's a collection of all my photos, where I've been, what I've done, um, and you can get souvenirs off the website and order things. So nonetheless, let's begin um, our journey to Glacier National Park and through Glacier National Park. So first and foremost, um, big universe books. There are two on glaciers and there's one on Glacier National Park. So again, write these down and go and explore in big universe um, about our glaciers. Um, I'll talk to you later about a winter program that I'm doing um, this year, you know, January, February for those students in China and even those who are in Canada, if they'd like to. Um, we're going to talk about why glaciers are disappearing, and it is a big deal because there were hundreds of glaciers at Glacier National Park. Now they're only 26. So that's a big change, and global warming is a big deal. Um, it's very serious. So if you're interested in taking my course on environmental science, um, we'll talk about the greenhouse effect, the global warming. Um, we'll talk about what environmental science is. You're going to have your own project to put together. Um, on PowerPoint and put it together. We'll have different experiments. I did one on the greenhouse effect. Um, we'll have quizzes and videos, books um, that you'll be learning during my winter program. So look me up on my winter program. I'll get more details to you later. Um, so let's divulge into the contents of what we're going to talk about today. So first of all, this is the sign that welcomes you to Glacier National Park. And what I do want to show you is this book right here. When you go through the ranger station um, at Glacier National Park, and they're going to be different ones because there's a west side and an east side to Glacier. Um, when you go through, you're going to get like a small brochure um, of Glacier National Park about just information, history, um, the animals, um, plant life, things like that, the basics. 
Um, also ask for this. These are these booklets are called the Junior Ranger programs. They're for the kids, for you guys, and I'm the big kid. So I also get one too, because I like to do the activities in here. Um, I got to do, I kept this one blank and I did another one. I learned a lot just from this book. So depending on how long you're visiting, this is a good book to pick up at the ranger station or the visitor center. Um, again, it's called the Junior Ranger Program. And just briefly, when you finish the book, you get a and you will get a patch. Um, I think it's a patch now, but it's going to look kind of like this little symbol here. It's the National Park Service symbol. And if you are a collector of patches or pins, you can start putting them on your backpacks and you can have Glacier National Park is one of them. Um, but this goes over the animals. So you'll see, we'll see some animals in my videos. Eagles, bears, moose, um, buffalo. You'll have some little activities like little word searches. It's pretty neat. about glaciers. So, and then this will talk about exactly like some of the history, like we're gonna talk about today with the Blackfeet and the Kootenai tribes, um, who were the first Americans, the Native Americans um, that lived in the area. So pick this up at the park ranger station and get busy with this. It's so cool. If you don't finish, you can mail it back to Glacier National Park when it when it's finished and then they'll mail, mail this back to you with um, your patch or your pin. So it's really cool, it's well worth it. All right, so there's the welcome to, National, to Glacier National Park. Let's talk about, we're gonna talk about the history um, going to the Sun Road. And again, there is a lot of history behind going to the Sun Road and all the photographs again are all mine. So you're gonna go crazy taking photographs when you're there. So have your camera ready. Um, hiking trails, oh my goodness. I have a huge map of hiking trails and I can recommend some hiking trails to you today. Um, wildlife, what kind of animals are there? Um, I've got some video footage, I've got some photographs and we'll talk about that. Um, working at Glacier National Park. Wow, 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 it was so much fun. Um, that picture that you saw earlier, this one right here, I actually went down, there's some picnic tables. I went down to the lakefront every afternoon at lunch and ate a sandwich. <laughs> that was my job. I checked in people for their cabins. And then at lunchtime, I went down here and ate my lunch. It was absolutely beautiful. The perfect place to eat your lunch. So yes, working there was magnificent. And so many people I met from all over the nation, even people from outside of America um, that came to visit. Um, and then we'll talk about winter program at the end. So are you guys ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Let's begin. And of course, write down your questions. If you have questions for me, we'll get to the questions at the end of, the, um, of this uh, webinar. All right, you guys, I hope you learn a lot. All right, let's begin. So I know that some of the details you were given about Glacier National Park earlier. Um, this is a grand welcome. These are photographs from the going to the sun road. Um, and honestly, it takes a lot of effort to clear the roads and you're going to see that in a minute because there's snow everywhere. And it's not until springtime that it starts to melt slowly. Um, humans have to kind of force the snow removal <laughs> um, away. So, and that's a good thing. We want to see our snow. Um, so Glacier National Park was established May 11th, 1910. Okay. In mostly Montana, which I showed you a map and the southern area of Canada. Um, so it's in both Canada and America. It is the 10th national park to open. Um, so here are some fun facts here also. 
131 named lakes, like Lake McDonald. Um, trying to think of um, a couple others. Let me look at my map here. Harrison Lake, Gunsight Lake, um, Quartz Lake, uh, Akukalo Lake. They have a bunch of different lakes. Grinnell Lake, which is a famous person um, with the history of Glacier. Um, so 131 named. Look at this one, 631 unnamed lakes. So bodies of water that are big enough to be a lake, but no name yet. A lot of that is probably due to the glaciers melting and forming these lakes. Um, so that's a lot, 631. 563 streams, wow. I can only imagine, see this here, this is a waterfall. And you can see one on the other side over here. These are waterfalls. If you can name all the waterfalls, there would probably be over a thousand. Really, it is crazy how many waterfalls there are. Um, 175 mountains. So these big snow-capped mountains, a lot of them, 175. And here's the sad part. With all these big numbers, these lakes, these streams named or unnamed, number of mountains there are only 26 glaciers remaining and they're getting smaller they're shrinking in size so not a whole lot left when there were hundreds before um remember i told you the area is montana and canada it's 1.2 million acres of wilderness so there's a lot of land at glacier that has not had humans walking on it um it there's so much to this park it's amazing you will be you be your eyes will go Wah! it's just crazy so 1.2 million acres it's a lot of land and that's a good thing because we have animals we have wildlife there so it gives them a home so remember i mentioned the waterfalls you will see waterfalls in a lot of pictures and they are absolutely amazing and again it's because of the melting of the snow from the mountains but also from those glaciers those 26 glaciers so in the early days um it was inhabited by two primary native american tribes um, for over 12,000 years and you're going to see that in the video here soon um, they were called the kootenai and the blackfeet they were the two biggest tribes there are a couple smaller tribes but these two were the main ones um, and they still remain up in that area. Um, early white men, trappers and traders found beauty in the lands. Remember I told you our history of America started in the East, then we went West. So those white men, trappers and traders were the ones that showed up, okay? Um, and they were just looking for what they could find, what kind of uh, animals out there, um, what kind of furs they could get and trade and make money. Um, and remember there's Grinnell Lake. So George Grinnell was the editor for a magazine called Forest and Stream. And this magazine actually had pictures um, of the large area of glaciers where glaciers existed. There were many, many lakes and tall mountains. Now remember he was taking pictures for his magazine before Glacier became a national park. So this was land that no one really knew much about. And his pictures went in a magazine and people bought the magazine from everywhere and saw these pictures. And they're like, oh my gosh, we have got to go. This is beautiful. So in 1912 through 1914, lodges were built like Glacier Park Lodge, Many Glacier Hotel, Lake McDonald Lodge, the Prince of Wales Hotel, which is the only one in Canada, these hotels were starting to be built. Now, if you remember correctly, 1910 was when the park was established. So George Grinnell was out there before that time advertising this area before it became a national park. And once it did, and that magazine hit people's hands, lodges, hotels were built. Um, even train tracks were built to go to the Glac to go to Glacier National Park. Um, this is the early 1900s, so they still had railroad um, trains all over the country. 
And then of course the old time cars, um, they had those to travel in. Um, so the completion, however, so from 1912 to 1914, they had hotels and cabins. Um, it wasn't until 1933 that the completion of the scenic route of going to the Sun Road was finished. Um, so 20 years later, there was 20 years of planning and we'll talk more about going to the Sun here in a minute. So let's look at a little bit of a historical video about Glacier. Make sure sound is turned up so you can hear. Glacier National Park, known for its towering glacier carved landscape. But there is a deep and spiritual human heritage here too. People have inhabited this land for over 12,000 years. It is the ancestral home of the Blackfeet, Salish, and Kootenai tribes. To them, these mountains have great spiritual significance. The first white men to come into the area were trappers and traders. By foot and horseback, they slowly made their way into what is now Montana during the early part of the 19th century. Word quickly spread about the beauty of these mountains through a popular magazine called Forest and Stream. The editor of this magazine was George Bird Grinnell, founder of the Audubon Society. Grinnell was a champion of wilderness areas and published articles describing the beauty of these mountains. He is oftentimes referred to as the father of the Glacier Park movement. And on May 11, 1910, Glacier was designated our nation's 10th national park. In the early 1900s, American travelers who wanted modern amenities in the great outdoors traveled to Europe and the Swiss Alps. Look at those beautiful mountains. In response, the Great Northern Railway developed the Sea America First campaign that quickly led to growing tourism in Glacier. From 1912 to 1914, three great lodges were built. Glacier Park Lodge, Many Glacier Hotel, and Lake McDonald Lodge, as well as nine chalets. A site was picked just across the border in Canada for a fourth great lodge, the Prince of Wales Hotel. Lake McDonald Lodge was the only hotel not built by the Great Northern Railroad. It was built by John Lewis, a land speculator who wanted to build a hotel worthy of the park. In the 1920s, members of the Blackfeet tribe greeted visitors as trains pulled into Glacier Park Lodge. Today, Glacier Park Lodge is on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation, and the influence of Native Americans is still evident throughout the park. In the early days of Glacier, you might find people doing many of the same things people are doing today. Horseback riding, hiking, riding tour boats, fishing, and exploring the glacial landscape. <laughs> it was obvious that, in addition to trails, roads would be needed to accommodate visitors' travels through the 1.2 million acres of wilderness. So in order to provide an easy yet still spectacular way to see the park, one of the highlights of Glacier National Park was completed in 1933, the Going to the Sun Road. More than two decades of planning and construction went into this engineering marvel. Sheer vertical cliffs, 60-foot snow drifts, and tons of solid rock made the road building even more of an accomplishment. On July 15, 1933, the park celebrated the road's completion at Logan Pass with an estimated 4,000 people in attendance. Spanning 52 miles across the Continental Divide, the Going to the Sun Road immediately became a motor adventure for visitors and sightseers. 
Open-air red buses were built so that visitors could experience the views of the park unhindered. Today, the road is paved, and the red buses still breeze visitors through the park in the style and grace of a bygone era. Even with all the visitation through the years, it's amazing that 90% of the park is still considered wilderness, a place just as untouched today as it was when those first peoples beheld it so many years ago. So, I have this actual DVD, and you can purchase it there at Glacier National Park. Oops, let's get it out of here first. All right, so that was the early days of Glacier National Park. Oops, what's going on here? All right, so um, you learned a lot about it. Uh, 12,000 years. There's the history of George Grinnell and his magazine that advertised the area. And of course, everything started going up hotels. Um, the Going to the Sun Road was built. Um, so moving on from there, here are some photographs from Going to the Sun Road. You can definitely see how much traffic um, at the end of June, early July is when they finally have the roads cleared and everybody starts heading that direction. You can see there's not a whole lot of passing. It's just one way going this way and one way going that way. And you've got these jagged rocks on the side of your door of your um, window. And be very, very careful because you're going to hit a waterfall. Um, this is called the Weeping Wall. Looks like it's crying from the mountain. And if you have your window open, which I accidentally did, because I was busy taking pictures, I got wet from the waterfall. <laughs> so yes, definitely interesting. So 20 years of planning after they opened in 1910, roughly 20 years. July 15th, 1933, Logan Pass is a halfway point between West and East Glacier. And it is a very busy place. You have to be there like four or five o'clock in the morning to get a parking space to go hiking because there are a lot of hiking trails at Logan Pass. It's a very popular area to be. Um, uh, Glacier National Park was consider considered an engineering marvel, meaning it was a very carefully planned out method to constructing this road with the tunnels and the bridges over these mountains. Um, 60 foot walls um, that overlook the, can or the, van the valleys of Glacier, very high walls. Um, and you get very close to the sides. Um, 51 miles worth of driving, uh, winding narrow roads, not a lot of straight roads, um, routes through bridges over and under and past waterfalls. Alongside glacial lakes, you'll see forests, sheer cliff drop-offs, about 60 feet snow drifts. Um, and then of course, jagged, sorry, jagged solid rock edges like you see here on the side. So be careful. Um, the best thing that you can do, um, you can ride your bike. You can also ride the bus that goes up and back and forth from East to West Glacier. And the cool part, I recommend the red bus tour because there you don't have to drive. You can just enjoy and listen to the driver actually give you information while he's driving you over the going to the sun road. Um, there were no large explosives, only smaller scale devices because they wanted to preserve the national, uh, I'm sorry, the natural landscape. Um, there was a collaboration between the National Park Service and the Bureau of Public Roads. So this became a scenic historical road for travelers. Snow plowing, you'll have to see this. Again, this is in the springtime when things are starting to melt. And remember those 60 foot snow drifts and those drop offs to the cliffs? Um, you can kind of see here, you're pretty high up right by this wall, this is the retainer wall. And over the side, boom is a cliff very high mountains you're looks like tiny little bugs and people down here when you're in the valley um, as opposed to where you are on the going to the sun road so here's just a little bit of a tour of the going to the sun road we'll just do a little bit of it 
So there's the welcome sign. There's the retaining wall that you see. And people park their cars off to the side. They are places to, to actually pull off so you can take photographs and selfies and all that. Look at the jagged rock edge on the left side. Be very careful with your mirrors on your car. <laughs> You'll see the waterfalls. Look at these beautiful waterfalls right here going down through those tunnels. And then you'll have this retaining wall here just to keep you up on the road here <laughs> it's very narrow and around every winding corner you're going to see mountains it is spectacular it's absolutely amazing i want you to keep in mind the roads, the turns, and the narrowness from the mountainside to the cliffs. Because you're going to see some plowing being done here in just a few minutes. <laughs> this is why it takes so long for the plowing to be completed. Look at these archways over here. A lot of times you'll get those waterfalls coming down that way. Let's do some moths up here up on the rocks. And look at again, jagged rocks carved out for the road. And here's the red bus tour. The driver will give you again a talking tour, give you information about the going to the Sun Road. This is at Logan Pass. I can tell that mountain. I've taken many pictures of that mountain. <laughs> a lot of tours, I'm sorry, a lot of hiking starts here at Logan Pass. But that's not the only place you can get on hiking trails. And I'll show you a couple secrets here in a minute. Notice how nice and warm it is. This is probably about July time, July, August. Always, always pack a backpack, extra clothes because it, it'll be hot and it'll be cool on some of the hikes because you'll get like forested areas and shade. Um, and then you also get into the, like parts of the mountain where you're really high up in elevation. You'll know and it'll get really hot. That sun will be beating upon you. So you'll have to probably take off, you know, a long sleeve or a jacket um, so you can cool yourself off. So always wear layers of clothes and have a backpack, lots and lots of water, your bear spray. Once you get here, you need to go get bear spray. Um, and then they can show you how to use it. Looks like a little tiny fire extinguisher almost. So just be prepared when you go on hikes and on the going to the sun road, there are little spots, little uh, trailheads is what they're called, where you can get off on the bus and go hiking and then get back on the bus later and go on a different trail if you want. You can hike all day long. So keep that in mind. So you get the idea, this is 51 miles of road, um, very high up. You see a lot of park from this road and make sure it's a must when you go to Glacier that you visit um, and drive maybe once or twice over this area. All right, if we have time, I can show you some more a little later. But what I do want you to see um, is the treacherous, and that means dangerous, <laughs> Um, job of the snow plowers. This is from the Bureau of Public Roads. They have to go up there, bring all of their equipment, um, their snow plows, and they have to clear the roads before the visitors come from all the snow. So let's take a look at that. Remember, 60 foot drop offs. <laughs> There's the road that we were just on. See the road we were just on? You can see the retaining wall right here. Early July, 
wide, that's about the time that the road will be open. Um, and then of course, Glacier National Park is open until early October, I believe. pretty neat little <laughs> thing for you guys to see. So moving on, this is again going to the Sun Road, some photographs that I have taken. Here are again some more and let's see. Yep. Okay. So we have about 10 or so minutes. Um, this is one of the lakes here, Hidden Lake. Again, more glaciers um, and mountains. You'll see part of the going to the Sun Road right here and the cliffs underneath. Here is the beautiful valley. So you literally have to turn around your head around to see behind you, um, as well as what you're going to come across when you drive. You'll see around every little turn, you'll see beautiful landscape. Here's some more, here's some of the hiking that we did. Um, here's the boat, they do the boat rides. That was really, really fun. Bring a coat because it does get breezy. Um, again, more areas where there's still snow and mountains and your lakes. All right, now the hiking trails. This was awesome. So these are a couple of my favorites that we went on. Um, John's Lake Loop is a short one, um, 1.9 miles, 3.1 kilometers. Um, very nice with the rivers and lakes. I'm sorry, well, mostly the rivers because there's a lot of them. Um, Avalanche Lake also was a really nice uh, hike, 4.6 miles or 7.3 kilometers. Um, Hidden Lake was up there um, close to Logan's Pass, and that was 2.8 miles. There's an overlook, so you don't have to go the whole way if you don't want to, but I would encourage you to go the whole way. It's really great. It's a really nice trail. The longest one that I went on, <laughs> and it was totally worth it, was Iceberg Lake. And I do have some video of that, um, 9.6 miles. So my legs were hurting. So if I stopped, <laughs> my legs were like, you know, they were just in pain. Um, so, but definitely worth it to see these icebergs. Do you see how they're broken up here? Well, this is in the summertime, July, August, when we went. Before that, it's just one sheet of ice until it starts to melt and break apart. So here is a little bit of video footage of some of the hiking trails. Make some notes on your hikes that you like. Go. There's some wildlife, moose, these little chipmunks, they're friendly. Hi, this is Evan hiking to Iceberg Lake Trail in Glacier National Park. It's 10 miles round trip and 1,765 feet of elevation gain. A lot of elevation. Located in the Manny Glacier area of Glacier National Park is the Iceberg Lake Trail. That's one of the historical To begin tells. the trail, park at the far end of the Swift Current Motor Inn parking That's lot. That's where you're going to need to go. From there, it's a quarter mile walk the to the start head. of the trail. So notice he had a t-shirt on. Follow the signs as you walk along a paved path to July the trailhead. Time. Trail is in grizzly country, so be sure to bring your bear, your bear spray. bear spray, that's what the container looks like. So again, this is not in The Iceberg close. Lake Trail shares the same trail as the Ptarmigan Trail for the first 2.6 miles. It's a beautiful day for a hike. It's, it's supposed paved. to get up to about it's 70 degrees today. Wild trails. Hard to believe it's the first week of June. <laughs> oh, first week of June. The park ranger was saying that it was possible to hike all the way to Iceberg Lake, even though it's so early in the season. So that's cool. You'll hear the water and everything melting. 
Today's a pretty big contrast from when I was hiking yesterday. Yesterday there was quite a bit of smoke from some forest fires, but I'm glad it cleared out. And yeah, we had a forest fire towards the end in August. So, June, July, August, good time to come visit. And this is where it gets shady, and it gets a little bit cooler. Your elevation is climbing, so once you get out of there, it's gonna be hot. This trail's real nice because you pass several waterfalls along the way. So I'm going to pour this just a little bit more so you can see more of the trail. So you get some snow now. After hiking two and a half miles into the trail, you'll reach the Ptarmigan Falls. There's the Ptarmigan Falls now. Going very quickly. some snow um, when I went with my husband it was melted so that was July getting closer when I see that mountain you're getting much closer and this is where we saw the moose was when we were passing over here in the snow it's getting closer the trail was all covered with snow the last mile and a half mm -hmm. Coming up on the lake pretty soon. Not too much farther to go. Pretty amazing. See now, look at here. It's ice covered a little bit still. See how it's one sheet where it kind of gets broken up a little bit later? It's beautiful. Iceberg Lake was still completely frozen over with a thick layer of snow. Look at that, crazy. But the smaller lake just next to it was starting to thaw and was still very nice. So that's the unnamed lake. <laughs> and then Iceberg Lake was frozen solid. So he went in early June, we went in July, and it was broken up already in pieces. Uh, so that was nice. So a little bit of glacier. That's just one of the many, many hikes that you can go on. One of my favorites. So this was our picture here. Again, the ice sheet was broken up into pieces um, and you could take photographs out there. It was really cool. Very, very cold water. So I would not recommend um, going into the water and maybe your feet, but make sure you um, just cool off. We had a little snack and got some water because it is a 10 mile hike. Um, there and back. So it is it is pretty far, but there are farther trails, which means me to this. Um, this has, let's see, 88 trails, hiking trails to go on at different parts in Glacier National Park. Um, I'll show you the map itself. So sometimes for the good maps, you have to pay a little bit of money for them. And this one here is called Day Hikes. So this is an amazing. I literally use this for every single hike to know everything about every hike, how long, what to bring, uh, what to do, what to see, what to look for, the different glaciers, the mountains, the lakes that you come across. Um, it was $12, but that's okay. It was well worth it. And written by, I forget the hiker. Um, well, but anyway, oh, here he is. His name was Jake Bramante. I didn't meet him, but he is the author of this hiking trail um, map. So anyway, you got to get that one. Um, so again, enjoy your time while you're there. This is part of Avalanche Lake Trail River. This is just some of the video footage I took while we were there. You can see my excitement <laughs> for these kinds of things. Wow. Best flow. All fresh water. It's like right below us. Isn't that crazy? You gotta be very careful around these um, rivers and streams. Very powerful. Cool. Crap, huh? Can we go rafting here? Nope. <laughs> you like hit your head on every single rock. Look at that one hanging out over there. Boom! Boom. 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 Boom
Yeah. Oh my word. That's crazy how quickly things melt and these streams are just a flowing with water. So beautiful time. This is here at Avalanche Lake. All right. So a little of our critters, our wildlife, please, please, please be very careful um, when you come across wildlife. It is no joke. Um, these animals need space. So please space yourselves away from them. Um, they might want to come across like this guy, this little chipmunk. We were at uh, John's Lake Loop and we were getting something to eat <laughs> and we kept our distance, but he wanted to get close to us because animals know humans and humans have food. So, you know, we, we would get up quickly and kind of go to a different spot, but he was very friendly, very photogenic, but they also carry rabies. So if they bite you, that's not a good thing. So please be very careful with the wildlife. Do not feed them and do not follow them around with your cameras and your phones. Let them be, give them their space. Um, so this was on John's Lake Loop, the chipmunks. They're little, little tiny guys and they run fast. Um, this is one of the white-tailed deer that we saw by our campsite in our camper, just running on through the grass, no big deal. This one here we saw at Avalanche Lake. This is another deer that we saw. Um, and then this was just driving around on the roads we saw a moose um, right there by the stream, just getting some water. So you'll see them all over the place. Um, so let's see what time we have. Okay, so I wanna show you this here is animal encounters. There are a lot of things to not to do, but you can see how closely people will get to them unexpectedly, meaning they didn't plan to see them, but they will. So you'll notice some of the words atop of the video Pay attention to those, okay? Do not get around wildlife. Give them space. <clears throat> so you've got your black bear. And this is where you are hiking on a trail and you're gonna come across this kind of thing. So just be really wary of it. Now I didn't see many. And one thing you're not going to do is do not look them in the eye, okay? Just kind of walk very carefully past them, but go slowly. Sometimes the best thing to do is just kind of bow your head down and, and bow away from them, okay? Don't follow them, and this is why. There's a cub. See the bear cubs? You don't want to get by the bear cubs, because mama bear won't be happy, <laughs> okay? So be very careful. You two bear cubs, keep your distance. Now he's zooming in with his camera, but do not follow them. Just walk past, take some footage. Angry there, bud? <laughs> this is a squirrel making that noise. <laughs> and they want their distance, too. There he is. I see him now. I'm going to say he's in the tree. <laughs> and he's gone. Hey, Those chipmunk. are little tiny chipmunks. They're so cute. What you doing, buddy? They love people food, so be careful. <laughs> There's one of the lakes. Now, this right here, and I'm not for sure, typically you don't see smoke. This is more clouds, I'm guessing. But when there is a forest fire, which typically there, there is every year, um, when we were there, it was very thick. Um, and I wish I could, had time for footage, but um, it will start in the forests and it's just a normal natural thing that begins because of the heat. Um, but also be very careful um, that if you do put a fire, they'll tell you the different fire hazards throughout the park, when to light a fire and when not to, when to barbecue on your grill and when not to. And make sure you follow those rules. But um, forest fires did happen the year that we were there. And a lot of the historical um, areas, um, the cabins were burned down. So it's a real thing. And they waited until the snow came back again to put it out, even though they had airplanes flying over with little buckets of water and putting, trying to put the fire out. Um, it grows very quickly. 
And when they close off roads, stay back away from them. Um, and hopefully the smoke will thin out if they get to it in time and they get it put out. But just know it's a normal thing. It will happen. Um, just like out in California, these things happen. Again, it's part of that global part of warming of the planet too. So you'll see some sheep. This one here is, um, these are mountain goats. And I think this was up at, um, be very careful, this lady is too close. <laughs> Brunel Lake, I think is where this hike was. Yeah, see there's her altitude. <laughs> She's very high. So just be very careful. They've got horns, so they will come at you. There's a couple black bears. There is mama bear. And they will cross the road when you're on the red bus tour or driving biking. Thank you. Please be wary when you're on your bike. Um, park rangers typically know where the bears are. They're up in the mountains and they'll come back down a little bit um, from the water because uh, it's still frozen and icy up top. So they won't be able to drink the water up top. They'll come down into the lakes and that's where you start seeing them by the roads, passing up the roads to the lakes and things. So just be careful and keep your distance and get your bear spray. Okay? But you're going to witness some beautiful creatures at Glacier National Park. All right, so I wish I had another hour with you guys. That would be great. So many things that I'd like to tell you. So this is my working days at Glacier National Park. This was us here at Glacier Park Lodge. Beautiful lodge to go and stay at and also visit. They have some gift shops and things in there. Um, they have restaurants all over. Um, this was our camper right here. We are very busy biking, uh, kayaks, hiking every day. This is us bike riding right here. This is, I actually got to ride my bike to work. It was pretty cool. I could walk or ride my bike every day and then sit out by Lake McDonald and eat my lunch. So perfect place to work and to play. St. Mary Lodge is on East Glacier side. It's a really pretty place to visit and to stay. Um, here's my husband and I, this was at John's Lake Loop, I believe. This is where I worked, Apgar Village. And this is our first day we sold out all of our cabins, believe that or not. Um, here's a good place to eat by the railroad. If you're coming by a railroad, which people do, um, Belton Chalet is right across from the railroad station, um, right by the bridge that comes into Glacier National Park. Here's me kayaking on Lake McDonald's. This you could see part of this from my photograph from earlier. And there's me just kind of reflecting on the beauty of the, um, I think this was when we went to John's Lake Loop. Um, that was a really easy hike, but beautiful hike. So if you're looking for a short one, that would be ideal for you. So beautiful place to stay. There is an official campground there now um, that was being built behind us. So right behind us here, they were building it in West Glacier. So if you are going to rent a camper, you can do that. Rent a camper and travel all over the nation. Um, and you can uh, make a reservation um, to stay in your camper, make your own food um, and do your own thing. And it's a little bit cheaper sometimes um, instead of staying at a hotel or a lodge. So lots of options to come and stay and play and work because we've got people that came from all over um, outside of the United States to come and work. Um, met lots and lots of people um, and lots of jobs. So anyway, this concludes um, Glacier National Park. Um, I did want to remind you guys of the winter program that I'm doing um, with environmental science from, from fourth grade through eighth graders. And I can take some third graders. Um, I know some of my students are hopefully here today. So if you'd like to sign up, let me know. Um, and it's 10 classes. Hopefully you, you'll take two a week. Uh, you'll have videos, experiments, you'll have books to read. Um, we'll have all kinds of discussion and you'll put your PowerPoint project together about how you can make a difference with the glaciers that are disappearing. We had hundreds of them in Glacier and now there's only 26 and they're slowly shrinking. So basically it's every day we walk upon the very soil that provides food for our bodies. We drink water to replenish our energy. We pass on to our children the importance of our health and well-being with good nutrition and plenty of physical activity. Each day we wake up is a day we live our lives. How do we continue the tradition of human life going? 
We can do our part to help each other by learning the importance of how we interact with our earth and how we can keep our earth healthy through simple measures of care. What technology have we been developing to conserve our energy and our resources, water, food, power, and soil? Take the time now to discover and learn about what you can do to help. So once again, if you want to sign up with me for the winter program for environmental science, um, help save our planet, how you can make a difference, let your, um, your admin know and you can send me a message also. Here are some of the books that we're gonna be covering. You'll do your carbon footprint. We'll talk about um, energy sources um, from solar panels to geothermal, um, hydroelectricity, which is like your dams being built, um, your wind power. Learn about what a climate scientologist, or they call them climatologist, but a climate scientist, what they do. What is global warming? What is the greenhouse effect? Learn about all of these things that affect us right now. Um, and how you can make a difference. All right, so I am going to come up out of here. Thank you guys for coming today. Um, thank you for my students who are here to support me.